Hello there, my name is Rob Stevens, and today I'm just going to do a very short introduction to discounting, which is at the essence of the key investment appraisal technique called net present value. Now before we get into net present value, we just need to understand the concept of discounting. Before we look at discounting, we need to understand the concept of compounding. Now compounding is something that you would have come across in your day-to-day -day lives and compounding just relates to the fact that when you grow money interest grows on the interest. So for example if I start off with £100 and my money grows at 10% per annum then in a year's time my money will grow by 10% or I could multiply that by 1.1 and that would give me £110, okay, which makes sense. But if I kept my money invested for a further year, I could grow my money by a further 10%, or that's 100 times 1.1 squared. If you grow your £100 by 10% for the first year, and then grow that entire amount at a further 10% for the next year, the amount of cash you'd have would be £121. Rather than starting at a value today, a present value, and working towards a future value, what we're doing in the concept of discounting is we are given this figure, the future value, and we're trying to work back towards what the present value equivalent is. Now, if you're relatively mathsy, hopefully you can see that if I were to divide both sides of my top calculation by 1.1 squared, which is the same as multiplying both sides by 1 over 1.1 squared, then I could rewrite the top equation like this. Okay, so you can see they're both the same calculation but expressed differently. One of them is adjusting a future value to get back to a present value, discounting. Compounding is taking a present value and working towards a future value. Now, if you're studying this at the moment, you won't always calculate a discount factor in this way instead you'll be given discount factors from tables where the calculation is already done for you and the factor being calculated to three decimal places so 1 over 1.1 squared is the, is the same as 0.826 rounded to three decimal places OK, now that's all there is to basic discounting. It allows me to take a future value and work back towards a present value. What I'd like to do now is do a very simple net present value calculation and try to show the use of this discounting um, idea. Now the net present value technique is a technique which tries to show how much better off shareholders would be as a result of a particular venture. And what I'd like to do with this particular example is to play devil's advocate, show you something where you can clearly see that a shareholder would be indifferent between my project and what they could do elsewhere. So let's do that now. So let's imagine for my project at time zero or today somebody offers me the opportunity to spend £100 on an investment opportunity. In a year's time they've promised to give me back £110. Now what we do with net present value is we take those particular cash flows and we put them into present value worth by using a particular discount factor. Now depending on where you study and what you're looking at, the discount factor, which I'm going to assume is 10%, could be 
the rate the the rate at which you could source finance at i.e. your cost of borrowing or it could be the rate that you could earn elsewhere on your money now if somebody said to you in a situation where you could earn elsewhere 10% I'm willing to take a hundred pounds off you and give you a hundred and ten pounds back in a year's time hopefully you'd agree that you would be totally indifferent between those two particular ventures because they both give you a 10% return and this is the clever part of MPV what NPV does it takes the cash flows from the project which is this column and brings them back to present value worths by discounting them at this rate now anything shown in today's money is already worth 100 pounds but the fact that you're getting 110 pounds in a year's time is the equivalent to you given your cost of capital or your discount rate of 10 percent that's the equivalent of 110 times 1 over 1.1 which would be 100 this calculation by the way is the same calculation as we just saw 1 over 1 plus your rate to the power of n where n is the period that you're in time one now what this calculation is giving you is a net present value of zero which says this project does not provide any additional wealth for shareholders over and above their discount factor remember what the discount factor was it could be the rate at which you could borrow at or the rate at which you could invest at elsewhere now if you wanted to you could redo this calculation and instead of using 110 in a year's time I could make this figure 120 now if you discount 120 the present value of that inflow would be 109 pounds meaning shareholders are nine pounds better off as a result of this venture compared to where they otherwise would have been now I just want to make a very small point remember that outlay of a hundred pounds you always could have earned a hundred and ten pounds yet this project is yielding a hundred and twenty you might think why isn't the NPV that extra ten pounds you've created well remember An NPV tells you the increase in shareholder wealth as a result of a project in today's money. Okay, so once I've discounted this extra ten pounds that's been created, that's giving an increase in wealth today of nine pounds. Okay, there will be more added to the series, and we can deal with other complexities. If you've got any other things you'd like me to consider, I can build that in with subsequent examples. But for now, that's just a nice brief intro into how net present value works. Obviously, in the real world, we'd have lots of different cash flows making these totals at T0 or T1, and that could go up for as many years as we'd like to consider. I look forward to speaking to you soon for the next instalment in this particular topic. Until then, it's been great to chat to you and I hopefully will speak to you very soon.